Hello and welcome to the Ramblings of a 42 Year Old Man. This is Chris Smith and today I am going to talk about the books of uh, Christopher Pike and uh, include some information uh, about uh, my history of, of reading them and uh, a podcast that I found last year that really got me, uh, you know, uh, rekindled my, my want to read these books and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the podcast, talk a little bit about the books, talk a little bit about Christopher Pike and, and go on from there. So, uh, Christopher Pike is a young adult horror novelist who started writing um, these young adult books back in the mid '80s. I think his first one was Slumber Party in 1985 or '86 in that in that age. But uh, for me personally, I know that I began reading him in 1990. I was 10 years old, which is a little, honestly, a little too young for these books, but. You know, it was the perfect age for me. I, it it, it kind of got me into horror novels, and I, I graduated up from there into bigger things. And as kind of still to this day, I like to read a lot of horror novels. I like to uh, probably help me with my love of horror films and stuff like that as well. So I'd say Christopher Pike was uh, pretty formative in my, in my young years. Um, so uh, again, for me, 1990, I'll remember I was kind of growing up on Hardy Boy books. I was reading an awful lot of Hardy Boy books back at that time. I think I, I don't know, this is number 35. I'm pretty sure that I've read one through like 50 of these when I was like 10 or 11. And then I know I would go to our county library with my mom all the time and uh, look in their kids section, which I think I think their kids section I, I was more going towards like the young adult section by that time even as a 10 year old I was I was more into little you know even the Hardy Boy books are probably geared more towards a like maybe 12 11 or 12 years old but I was looking in the paperback rows and I found uh let's turn around here I found this book sitting right on the uh paperback uh, rack and the cover kind of I, I love the the colors the the different you know the writing and just th this really grabbed my interest and I remember I went home that day and I read that book that night I had it done before the end of the day and uh I was hooked I was hooked I went back to the library grabbed everything I could by him so <clears throat> by 1990 he had already probably probably about let's see about a dozen books already out uh so I went and grabbed all of them read, read through all of them and I started picking up new releases as they were coming out as well and uh, just read everything I could get my hands on. And just just so an idea of some of the stuff that I was reading at 10 years old, uh, these things would have ghost, uh, time travel, lizard people, uh, possession, possession by animals, and <laughs> specifically possession by a vulture. That was a very interesting story. Um, space vampires, Hindu gods, Greek gods, and... Sex, 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 which I would tell you was not not explicit, not like, you know, some, you know, trashy romance novel or anything, but definitely more than anything I had read as a 10 or 11 year old was just very sexual and very, you know, provocative, but, you know, never going hardcore or anything, nothing like that, but definitely enough to pique the interest of a 10 year old boy for sure, uh, going into, you know, getting into where he was about to be going through the, those kind of pre-teenage times of his life so little eye-opening experiences reading through all those but um a lot of you know a lot of fun reading those they they kind of prepared me to graduate up into some of the bigger things so you know i would go from christopher pike i tried rl stein i'll be honest if you do christopher pike first in my opinion i feel like rl stein feels a little tame honestly i mean yeah there's some, some good stories and stuff in there but i think pike goes a little further than a lot of the rl stein stuff does so I always felt that uh, I was too cool for Stein. You know, I had to go with the Pike. I had to go with the hardcore stuff, you know. But <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that prepped me for my love of Stephen King. I mean, I, I'd say you go from, you know, books like that, then all of a sudden you're picking up something like this. <laughs> it takes a little bit of time to get from there to there. But, uh, you know, I, I will definitely say that, that Christopher Pike was the beginning of me getting into things like Stephen King or Dean Koontz, uh, John Saul, things like that as I was growing up. So um, that's kind of me and my young adult life with, with Pike. I'd say by 1993, so about from 1990 to about 1993, I read everything I could of his. 
Uh, by about 1993, I started kind of where I wasn't going out to the bookstores so much. I wasn't trying to pick up the newest thing. At that point, I was making more friends in school, going out and playing outside more often. You know, imagine that these days, kids playing outside. But, uh, you know, there, my, my reading came down a little bit. Or I would start reading bigger things. I mean, at that point, I'm reading Stephen King. I may not go out and get the next Christopher Pike book that I see on the shelves. But, um, you know, still... I really enjoyed those books, and uh, so years and years later, we're talking about about a year and a half ago, uh, I was going through my podcast channels trying to find something to listen to, and I came across the Pike Cast. So I kind of looked through, I picked an episode, started listening through, and uh, really loved what they were doing. So um, Cooper and Cassie and Becca, uh, these three people, take a one Pike novel at a time. And kind of go through it. They talk about characters. They talk about, obviously, plot details. Um, you know, spoiler-filled. They really do cover, like, the entire book. So your, your best bet is to read these books before you listen. But um, just, some great, you know, really, really good in-depth talking. Um, Cooper does a great job kind of guiding the conversations. And Cassie and Becca, you know, really run with it in wild and different ways sometimes. You can tell they're having a blast. I, I know... Near the end of the episode, sometimes we'll kind of have like the outtakes and most of it's just them laughing at as, as silly things that they say. It's a lot of fun, but uh, really, really fun. I, I, I listened to a few episodes of that and I'm like, you know what? I want to I want to start reading these again. And I don't think I had any left of uh, what I owned when I was younger, but uh, I went out and I tried going to my used bookstores and my libraries and just couldn't find them. Couldn't find them anywhere. There was some re reissues of a couple of his books, but they look like. I don't know, like teenage girl Twilight kind of covers and stuff. I really did not was not interested in in picking anything like those up. But I found on uh, Thrift Books, uh, an app, uh, thriftbooks.com actually, uh, where you can I guess they go around to any of these used bookstores that they have around, and they and you can purchase books online through them. So I went ahead, and this whole shelf is all of the Christopher Pike books that I picked up in the last year year and a half or so and favorites like obviously remember me is still my number one favorite see you later which not only is this one of my favorite books but the copy that i got from thrift books is in amazing shape i mean this is a 30 year old book and it is it is wonderful shape um and of course i think most people's favorite pike book is probably monstrous one of his classic ones um i like remember me a little bit more but this is also a really great one as well and, and obviously most of these are very fun. I wouldn't call them the highest form of literature or anything, but they're definitely really fun. Even as an adult, I had a really good time. I mean, I probably stopped reading like around this point, maybe when I was a kid. And so everything that I read from here on was kind of new to me and still really, really enjoy it. And he's got some adult novels too. Um, Season of Passage would probably be his most famous adult novel. And it's, it's, really really fun and it gets you know his adult novels really go a little harder than the young adult ones do a little more uh scares a little more goriness to them but uh, a lot of fun as well so you know thanks for listening to the pike cast kind of getting me back into wanting to read those i picked them all up i read through them and um i still do have a couple left i haven't done strange girl or the blind mirror yet so i'll be getting to those soon but uh just a lot of fun kind of bringing back memories of reading them when I was a kid. And then, of course, reading new ones that I had not read before. Um, you know, you, you definitely, there's plenty of tropes in Pike's work. I, you, if you listen to the Pike cast, you'll hear them talk about it all the time. But, um, you know, they're tropes that I enjoy. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the trope if you enjoy them, right? So um, I have a great time reading those. So, again, whether you're younger, whether you're my age, maybe you read these as a kid as well maybe can bring back some memories by reading some of those and again the pike cast which i will put um a link to uh their podcast um somewhere in my uh description field for this episode but uh if cooper or cassie or becca happen to to listen or watch this thank you guys very much you rekindled my uh my wish to go back and and, and read back up on the christopher pike and i had a whole lot of fun last year and a half just reading through his uh his uh by bi the i can't think of the word right now all of his books <laughs> bibliography thank you uh so thank you again podcast thank you again everybody who's listening uh that's my ramblings for today and i will be back later with some more thank you very much for listening 
Hey, before I end this episode, I would be remiss to uh, forget to mention that the Pikecast does have a merchandise shop as well. And the shirt that I've been wearing today, um, actually I ordered from them and um, they got a lot of different options. Obviously I went with written by Christopher Pike, but they've got um, a lot of different color options. Um, the Midnight Club TV show that was just out recently, all the different directors of the episodes of that, they have different shirts uh, that say directed by and it's got a bunch of people, including Mike Flanagan. Um, I'll be saving the Midnight Club until I do a Mike Flanagan episode. I got a lot of stuff to talk about with him. But um, also just FYI, the podcast is currently in the middle of doing an episode by episode breakdown of that show. So they're taking hiatus from the books to go over the uh, the show currently. I believe um, there's like one or two more episodes left for them to go. So again, if you pick them up, give them a listen. You'll be able to hear uh, not only about the books, but about the TV show as well. Thank you again. Thank you.